Hi, and welcome back to 100 Days to Zero Waste. These past few weeks, contestants have been having a really tough time, realizing that there's so many things you can't zero waste, realizing that the problem is not the individual, but is structural. And so how do we really address these things in 100 days? What we've learned from this is that we can't. Every time we go and ask for a zero waste solution, if we're met with health and sanitation issues or if we're met with limitations that we impose on our own health psychologically and physically, then that means we have to turn to the systems at large, include more people, include more voices. So much of zero waste has been about choice. And if we don't have choice, being some of the most privileged people in the world, then how can we expect everyone to take on these individual challenges to become zero waste? Despite these difficulties, this challenge has changed our lives. And we hope to move forward and explore these structural issues, not stop here. As this is a reality show, hopefully we can break up the myth that zero waste is an individual problem. We've tried it and we've proved for ourselves and others that it just can't be solved on this level. But there are some things we can do. In order to preserve their psychological and emotional health, we had the contestants vent for a couple weeks, catch up on what they hadn't tackled yet to see if they really could still tackle it or if they just had to make waste because there was no other option in certain areas. Let's hear what they had to say. Four contestants in Providence, Rhode Island make the journey to declutter their lives and say goodbye to their trash cans. This is 100 Days to Zero Waste. It's me, Marissa. We haven't talked in a while. Um, I'm gonna give you the down though, because I've just been a mess lately. Uh, I was away for a week for spring break because I went on this backpacking trip, which actually I thought a lot about zero waste in preparation for that because I bought myself, like we had food and whatnot, but I bought myself a lot of the food that I wanted to bring and it was all in package things because I couldn't really bring containers and whatnot. Um, I don't know, and I, I definitely was reflecting a lot on the waste that I felt like I was producing. Like we had to put things in plastic bags in order to carry them. And I was like, how could one like go backpacking in a zero waste way? Um, so I did really think about that a lot. And I just wasn't sure of a solution because it was also my first time backpacking. After it was kind of craziness because I was in tech, show, tech week for a show I was doing uh, and also costuming for another show. I'm just doing too much. Uh, and subsequent to that show ending, the next week was just not a good week um, because I unfortunately got some news that a dear friend of mine from home passed away. So it's a lot of like, uh, just kind of trying to pull myself together and then going back home for like the wake and the funeral and whatnot. Um, I've had to take a lot of work off lately for all these things, but we're getting in a, in a pretty good place. <laughs> I'm trying at least. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what's been going on with me, and I haven't been able to spend a lot of super time focusing on zero waste. Uh, definitely my compost bin is very full, it needs to be emptied, I have been doing my compost, I've been good about that. So one of our tasks for this week was to catch up on something we didn't get to do on a previous week, and this week I finally calculated my carbon footprint from my trip uh, abroad and I only focused on the transportation I didn't look at what my carbon footprint was as far as food or lodging I actually looked at how many miles total I as an individual traveled in taxis or ubers or buses trains planes and a boat you can see my messy Estimates of miles traveled. Anyways, at the bottom, 1.32 metric tons is what I got on this website. And then they allow you to offset your footprint. And there are several different options. And the one that's interesting to me is this one. It uh, is specific to the Amazon and the Amazon is in Brazil and South America. 
So as a way of honoring my trip and the place where I went to and the places that I enjoyed, I think I'm going to offset with this group. And there's a bunch of information on how all of this works and there are various projects. And this week, as part of catching up, uh, I decided to <laughs> fight my fear and try a homemade toothpaste. Needs a lot more peppermint. Good morning, it's Wednesday, March 28th. And um, that means we are in week six, day 39 of 100 days to zero age. So since we're past the one third mark and actually almost to the biblical 40th day, I thought I would do a little wrap up of um, where, where I'm at. So how I'm benefiting from this. So better shopping, making the most out of the foods that I have around here and that I do bring into the house. Uh, no trashing leftovers, which used to give me remorse. I'm really using everything. The economics of the dollars saved by not eating out and also by shopping more smartly. I feel re-energized about cooking, trying new recipes, so that's creative and, and really important to my soul, my well-being. So I feel like there's a whole bunch of benefits that I've already begun to uh, experience that make a big difference in my life. Um, I'm shopping so much better. I, I actually make a plan. I'm talking about grocery shopping. Um, I make a plan. I go to Hope and Time and Whole Foods and to our local uh, farmers markets and I use my, uh, my reusable kit and my glass jars and for some reason there's a zen in all that. Like I used to hate grocery shopping and I would send my husband to do it and I might still cook but I always hated grocery shopping. So when I go to a place like Hope and Time you see jars and you just see what's in them. Hello, um, so I'm talking to you this time about kind of just like just like venting and maybe just sort of like reflecting on the past kind of week or two. Um, so kind of as a as a group we just sort of, we decided to um, sort of slow down a little bit um, for you know we talked about for these sort of week to week to week assignments um, because it in in having something happen every uh, every seven days it's it's sort of like you're always um, you're always trying to make these changes and you don't really get the, the chance to sort of develop them as habit um, so it's just that you, you you take something on and then quickly move on to the next everyone everyone thinks it's like really sort of funny um, I don't know if that's because of me specifically they think it's funny that I'm doing it um, or if they think it's kind of funny in general and when I say funny I um, they sort of like kind of laugh almost in like disbelief that something like this is possible um, and I think they're all sort of very interested in sort of the fact that I am trying to make it realistic and feasible I'm really I'm really doing everything I said I am um, which I'm impressed with myself because I didn't know how much I would really be able to sort of stick to it. I look forward to, uh, no spoilers, um, the next couple of weeks, what we have going on. Um, I think one of them relates pretty interestingly to industrial design and sort of, um, that's all I'll say for now. But uh, it'll be cool to sort of have something um, also align with my my interests prior to this challenge because a lot of these things are sort of very new but it's sort of fun to be able to tie in my own um, you know to bring something to the movement and bring something to the landscape that I haven't seen before or that is just not as widely represented. This has been another episode of 100 Days to Zero Waste. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.